Hello everyone, welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Angel Bobs. This is going to be a bit of a sort of a bitty bitty episode because I've done quite a lot of different things recently, most of which have been quite small. The first one on my list is upgrading the transistor belt here to a purple belt. Now, now that I've got these purple belts, I'm going in and finding all the bottlenecks and just slapping them down all over the place. It's fantastic having these available. Um, and the reason I've done this is because previously the red and blue circuit production was going incredibly slowly. And that was because it turns out to make a red circuit requires, I think it's something like five, yes, five, for four transistors and four resistors as well. So there can, you need a huge number of those coming in. So I've upgraded both those to purple belts. We've got a huge stream of them coming in now, and it means we're making them reasonably quickly. It's still not got all of the machines on my um, on here running. I'd need to bring them up even quicker for that, and, and maybe I'll look into that in the future. We'll see. We'll see how it goes and whether I've got a, a particularly a particularly bad shortage of them. Blue circuits are absolutely fine, as you can see. This is um, now completely backed up. They're they're hardly being used at all. Although I think that's going to change once I start making green science. Red circuits. Let's have a look. Got, yeah, not got a huge number of those, so I think I do need to go in and try and make red circuits even faster. Um, probably by splitting off the, where are we, here we are, splitting off the resistors and transistors onto separate belts and then putting the um, solder, oh dear, uh, what's happening here, why is one of my trains screwing up, there we go, whatever you're doing, stop it. So I've got this alert system, I'll, I'll, I'll mention this since it's just gone off, I've got an alert system here where all of the... Um, the stops are wired together with this red wire that goes up here and then that's linked into a klaxon somewhere around here oh there it is hidden hidden in here there we go this speaker pole sounds an alarm and flashes an alert up if i um, ever have a train in the in the depot with anything in its cargo so here for some reason there's a cargo wagon with with some gold ore in it i don't know why i'd have that because the gold ore is something i've been short of recently so let's send this off to um, Gold Ore Drop, I don't know, let's send it to that one and tell it to wait there until it's empty. This one is a bit more of a mess, this has got solid, oh it's got solid fuel in it because I stopped it there, okay that's why. Right, I um, yeah, I need to go and tidy that up manually, so I'll do that later. Okay, so what was I saying, ah oh, yes, the red circuits, what I'm, what I'm going to do in order to get them running properly is have one belt for the red boards and the solder and then two separate probably purple belts carrying in resistors and transistors and that will in theory double the maximum number I can get through here um, and well I don't know it's just gonna use basically all of those the rate we seem to be getting through red circuits though I might need more than that um, but we'll, we'll see how that goes so that's relatively fixable I can I can deal with that the next thing I was doing was tinkering with the, um, the fluid balancing system over here on uh, on this system because I found that purified water just wasn't playing nicely. I was having endless trouble keeping it all reasonably well balanced so I've gone around putting in various extra tanks and pumps that are linked up to those tanks sort of to make sure they don't we don't produce too much more water from here when we haven't when we've still got some that needs to be dealt with from from dealing with the um, the byproducts of the floating. Um, so I've got all these tanks, and then there's just oh, there's not enough water getting down to, down here. So these are these these systems are running slowly. Um, so that needs some more attention still. As you can see, most of these floaters are, are red, meaning they're not working. So I think that means I need to have water being pumped in the bottom from the bottom here here as well. And so I'd, I'd I'd unlink this, but I need to link it back up to these tanks and say if they're nearly empty, then then run. But yeah, it's it's an ongoing process because. It's a struggle to get it, get it correct, get it balanced, get everything, make everything happy. Um, but I seem to have gone too far the other way this time. <laughs> the next thing I investigated was it turns out in an update. I've had an update fairly, well, actually quite a while ago, but I've only just noticed the problem. And it turns out mud has been nerfed of all things. So it used to be that when you, when you did. Um, washing processes like like this one turning viscous mud water into heavy mud water and so on all the way up the chain using these washing plants here it used to produce mud every single time now there's a 50% chance of 0 to 3 of it so that's an average of um, 
two and a half, one and a quarter mud each time it runs. So I was running out of mud in my um, in my processing facility here that, uh, that, that produces the soil uh, with the fertilizer that is then turned into into trees and wood and so on. So what I've done to fix that is I've just built this plant up here that's just churning water, churning muddy water through and turning it into mud and then the mineralized water that gets washed away here. So that was a, that was a fairly easy fix, but I had to, but it took a bit of, it was a bit confusing and it took a bit of sort of tracing it backwards to work out why it was a problem when it hadn't been before. I've also added in quite a lot more of the, um, what, what do you call it, arboretums to grow more, more wood because I just didn't have enough of it and it's growing very slowly. Uh, we've now got to the point where it's the seeds that are insufficient. As you can see, these ones aren't running, um, and that's because we haven't got enough of these seeds coming, enough seeds coming out of these temperate seed generators. Uh, the problem with this is to make these. It's not just normal resources. It's go out onto the map somewhere and find a specific type of magic tree. Now here's one here. It's these these things, temperate trees. Not these trees. They're just normal trees that produce wood. As you can see, four wood, whereas if I chop this one down, I get 100 wood, which is always nice, and I get one special magic tree that can be turned into a seed generator. So I need to go out and find a few more of those, I guess, which I suppose means roll the artillery train up to here, shell everything until it's all dead, and then go out and pick it. Um, so that's, that's, and there's a reasonable number around, there's another one here. I've, I went round and I marked some of them, because you can spot them on the map, because they've got these blue um, blue dots that look surprising, that look quite a lot like um, pylons. They're actually they're a slightly different shade of blue actually, but they're out in the in the wilderness waiting to be found. So those are things slightly frustratingly, you need to actually go out and harvest them yourself, uh, harvest them individually rather than having an automated system to produce them. But once you have those, you can turn it into a into a seed generator like these ones, and then it, it's quite a slow process, but they will eventually spit out a seed every so often or a handful of seeds every so often, which you can then grow in your arboretums, which again is also a slow process. I've noticed all the biological stuff, except making compost, seems to be a very, very slow process. <coughs> Speaking of making compost, that's what we're doing here, because we need quite a lot of that to make soil, and I was having all kinds of shortages of that. Um, so what, I, what I'm doing here is I'm growing algae in these sort of pond things, which don't require any inputs other than water, and then they spit out two types of algae. Um, and I discovered that wasn't enough, so I built some more down here. It's useful having all this space available again, actually. I've been um, spilling over into that a bit. So as you can see, we've got the two types coming out here. It's splitting them off, basically turning the green algae and a little bit of the brown into, um, into compost, and then taking the excess off up here and loading it into a couple of stations so I can take brown algae off and green algae off to be turned into other things. Uh, other things that require sort of miscellaneous biological inputs. So leading on from that, the green algae is being taken over here to another science pack production system and dumped here in this in this station. And what I've got here, as you can see, is it's taking out essentially any sort of biological matter. It doesn't really matter which. Uh, I started off with wood initially and then I thought, actually, that's a waste of wood. Let's start using algae instead because that's just being turned into compost by these machines. And then combined with urea gas, we get uh, what's this special because that's, that's compost. That, oh, fertilizer. There we go. And that's being fed up to these things at the top here. And these all seem to have... I'm not sure what's going on here. These should, At least some of these should be running. And I don't know why they're not. That's a worry. Okay, so what we've got here... These machines are, as you can see, they're, they're seed extractors. And what they do is they take another specific thing that you have to go out into the world and pick up individually. Uh, specifically, these ones are for desert gardens. Um, and then they'll turn those. This is a quite a frustrating recipe. As I shall show you. This is not... Okay, this is interesting. The, um... There has been a massive change in the. Um, <laughs> I updated my. I updated all my uh, mods fairly recently, and there's been a spectacular change in how everything works. So um, this is now all completely broken, which actually is, is kind of a good thing because it was rather unbalanced before. So before what we had was you put in one of the desert gardens, and as I said, you have to go out into the wilderness to find those, and those are signified by green dots on the map like this one, except most of the green dots seem to be these puffer nests, which are, I haven't got a use for at the moment. So they're, they're much harder to find. 
I turned the first three or four of those I found into um, what do you call it? These things, the uh, alien plant life samples, because they're used for research. <clears throat> you can feed them into your into your science labs in the same way you do with the normal science packs. <clears throat> And those few allowed me to then research the recipes to allow me to multiply the desert gardens. And what that requires is these, these seed extractors and the, and the fertilizer. And what it produced was for every, every time it ran, which took literally literally took five minutes to run, it would then have a 5% chance of producing an additional desert garden. So it would spit out the first one, maybe possibly produce another one if you're lucky. Um, and I think it was a 25% chance of spitting out a few of the... Um, these sample things which is why I've now managed to accumulate 96 that's not doing too badly so my hope was that I'd leave this system running for forever and eventually it will produce enough of these um, desert gardens that I'd then be able to expand out and have it and then have it producing the uh, samples at a decent rate and I'd be able to feed them down here for, for future research projects um, now that the <laughs> now that there's been a massive change in all the recipes from this upgrade, uh, I can't find samples in the yeah. So there's been a massive change in the recipes here. I'm going to have to go in and rethink all of this because this is just completely broken from the updates. So that's fun, um, and that sort of derails a bit of what I've been trying to say. <laughs> So yeah, I was using the, as I said, I was using the green algae as, as fertilizer for the, as to compost for for, the, for this, and that was working quite nicely. Um, but now not so much. What else has been broken by the update? Um, and I was thinking that yeah, you need to expand out these, this seed generation here so I can get all of these running. But then I checked checked on the wood production here, and it's actually there's 47,000 in there, so that's a that's a good amount. I'm not currently worried about the amount of wood that's, that I've got produced, so I think I can I can leave that for now and, and worry about it later. So my next challenge is going to is going to be fixing this because it's now completely broken. So I need to find a way of producing these. Basically, I don't actually care about the desert gardens specifically, except as a means to an end for getting these um, biological life samples. So if it turns out there's another recipe I can use to produce these, and for some reason they're very difficult to find in here. There we go. He says immediately finding it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there we go. You've got to turn a desert garden into 32 of them. That's how I got my first ones to bootstrap the, the research, research to get some more. Same with the other types of gardens. Interesting. Okay, so there's no actual other way to produce them apart from from these. However, it seems there's another way to make the desert gardens. You can double them with alienated fertilizer. Hmm. Mineralized water is fine. I can make that. Alienate. Alien. Alien bit. Oh, this is all very new to me. I'm. This is going to be interesting. Okay. Um. And then, so it's going to, so it's, you get, see, so you get, so one of these makes 32, but the previous recipe turns 30 into, into a second one. So, so yeah, okay, that would, that will produce a bonus of two every single time in exchange for two alienated fertilizer and some water. So, I'm going to, going to need to find out a way, find out if I can make alienated fertilizer. Let's see, what are the other recipes? Uh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted ways of making them. This is done. No, this isn't suitable. I'm a cellulose pulp is probably going to be fairly easy to make. Mineralized water is easy, but having a, a three percent chance of getting in exchange for one of those isn't really isn't worth it because that's not going to be sustainable because uh, one of these turns into thirty two. So unless you're very lucky several times over, yeah, that, that's not going to work. So it's going to have to be this recipe, which means I'm going to need to work out the alien, alienated fertilizer. Okay, well, <laughs> that gives me something to work on. Um, in a way, I'm sort of lucky about that, because the reason I was looking into this is because I wanted to... Um, interesting. Uh, that's new. Uh, so yeah, I wanted, I wanted to be able to in, 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 do modules. Um, and so the, the weird thing, because, that's, because I want to be able to make things run faster and more efficiently, and I'm pretty sure you need this for 
advanced, more advanced science and rocketry and stuff like that. And the weird thing is, in order to get that, one of the prerequisites, at least it was before, <laughs> I think again this is going to have changed and I'm not going to be able to find it. There was one of these... There was previously a, pre a prereq for that. <laughs> Um, before the mod, mod pack change that required the biological research. I I managed to unlock that. I got enough of these things to get the module research done. So I actually don't really care about this anymore. Maybe I'll just ignore this until next time I need it and just forget about it. Because the next thing I want to work on is going to be uh, green science. Oh, I'm getting attacked. These things are enormous. Um, yeah, okay, the bots will probably deal with that. Yes, they will. Excellent. Right, so as I was saying, green science. Um, as you can see here, it requires quite a lot of stuff. Um, the electric engines are a, a solved problem. I don't need to worry about them. I've got I've got them being produced on my um, on my main bus. The um, what do we call it? It's these uh, bearings are relatively easy to produce. I don't. I'm not too worried about that. That's that's um, easy enough. It's just a very various ways of manipulating titanium. This powdery stuff, which I've forgotten the name of, um, looks pretty easy. Oh, silicon something or other. Silicon nitrate, I think, is relatively straightforward. You just, um, yeah, as you, well, you can see, it's turned this from coal and water and air. So that's, that's, that's fairly straightforward. These lithium batteries are going to be a bit more of a, um, a challenge, I think. Um, so as you can see, there's quite a lot of stuff that goes into these. So that's going to be um, interesting, but I, I think I think I should be able to manage that. And that's something to use the, all that brown algae I've been building up for. Um, and then there's the uh, the low density structures, which are just plastic, aluminium, and titanium. So that's going to be absolutely trivial. I can I can do that with no problems. So yeah, next challenge is going to be getting the green science up and running. Um, I think I'll cover that in the next episode. And I hope you'll join me for it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.